Bolden is a data dis a dissemination specialist with the Customer Liaison Marketing Services Office at the Census. She began her census career in 1988, where she served as a partnership specialist for the 1990 decennial census. Leah has an extensive background in community initiatives with the Census Bureau. She has served in the partnership and data services programs in both the 20, 2000 and 2010 census. And Leah today will be presenting an overview of navigating the Census Bureau's websites and highlight some of the more popular tools. And we thank you very much for this presentation, Leah. And I will just remind folks, I will be um, collecting. If you have any questions, type them as they occur to you. And then I'm going to be jotting them down. And I will share them with Leah at the end of the presentation. So once again, if you have questions, please type them as they occur to you. And uh, we will, um, I will feed them to Leah at the end of the presentation. So now, Leah, thank you very much for what you're about to share with us. And I'll turn the microphone over to you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Um, so today, you know, we're going to be talking about what's new uh, at the Census Bureau, what's new in census data, and some of our, our interesting uh, access tools. It's going to be a short presentation, and I wanted to just hone in on, you know, some of the key uh, developments. Uh, Leah, your mic got shut off for some reason. Okay, great. Will you repeat what you just said? We lost you. Sure. What, what, I, what I'm going to be doing today is you know, going over some of the key developments that are occurring at the Census Bureau that you as librarians need to be aware of. And so it's a short presentation, and you know, we'll be able to complete in a short period of time. So, and so I understand that um, some of the key areas that, um, that you may be interested in Okay, I keep wanting to click the wrong place. Here. All right, um, I, I get that you all understand some of the vast amount of data that the Census Bureau uh, is engaged in, over 100 types of surveys. So just kind of as a snapshot, you know, these are some of our key areas. I won't belabor them, but I did want to you know, just highlight you know, that we have the county business patterns, I think it's 2014 zip code business patterns, and then the 2012 survey of business uh, owners uh, is also available. And so if you have uh, patrons that come in that are looking at um, you know, data by gender, Hispanic, or, or race, uh, it, it gives you some key demographic and economic business data. So uh, that's, that's available. And the, and the oldest one, of course, is 2007. And then there's um, non-employer statistics. So all of our economic data uh, has been released. And so the 2012 economic census, and you can actually go in and into American Fact Finder and pull, you know, the economic uh, data. Uh, I will also just highlight today uh, census business builder, so you understand what that is if you don't already. And in case you have someone that's interested in starting a business that may want to look at that tool in order to you know, do a kind of a market profile. So a wide array of Census Bureau products. Uh, one of the things that is occurring is that we are planning deeply for the 2020 Census. So that's going to be you know, primary. Uh, and you should be aware of that, and I'm going to highlight that. But you know, when anybody comes in you know, to the library and needs to have data, characteristic data, particularly looking at data down to small geographic areas, you know, sub-county, sub-place, you know, census tract, uh, zip code areas, even small as a block group. And of course, American Community Survey is the survey of choice. And um, so it's, it's, we will be releasing, and I'll talk about that in a second so you can see a copy of the release schedule. But it's, it's been strong, and everybody that I present to use this uh, in their community analysis. And these are some of the major topics, you know, social, the social topics, the demographic topics, the economic topics, as well as the housing topics that uh, this, the American Community Survey um, will be able to provide uh, data points in. So it's, it's pretty elaborate and vast and, you know, very, very important uh, for us to look at trends. So in terms of the American Community Survey, on our website, we 
have a copy of the, the, the data release schedule. So as you all can see here, you know, we have released the one-year data set. So, so that's for all populations over 65,000. That was released on September 15th. And um, we have also in October um, you know, released the, the POMS, the Public Use Microdata Sample File. And uh, we also released some supplemental estimates, um, some variance tables. Those were also released. In November the 8th, I'm sorry, December the 8th, that's when we're going to see the latest 2011-2015 uh, five-year estimates uh, that you know, you'll be able to then uh, look at some of those small geographic areas. That will be our, our newest release. And uh, we'll also be looking at data tables here. We have you know, the data profiles, uh, which are rich in information if you were looking at a community analysis. Subject tables give detailed information about a particular subject like poverty. Detail tables have more of the, um, um, the most cross tabulations, and the geographic comparison tables allow us to look at you know, compared geographic areas. There's also in the one year a comparison profile, and that's not in the five year sample, but that is in the one year sample, which is really good a comparison profiles of looking at trends, and that's, that's the comparison from 2010 um, onto um, the current time period. There's also the narrative profiles, which is another great tool. So, you know, rich in, rich in data in terms of just being able to look at a community uh, in detail. Many of you, have, if you've been to any of Linda Clark's former presentations, this is really her slide, but I'm, I'm going to probably retire it uh, at some point. But it tells a, a really good story of um, the history of the American Community Survey uh, in that we went fully operational in 2005. So we've actually, in 2015, have been you know, going through this process you know, for, the, for a 10-year period. And what you can see here is, um, as I mentioned, in December, we'll see this, this latest release here. And um, again, um, being able to give us data to, in small geographic areas, you know, across all geographic areas uh, in the US. So it's one of our uh, most needed surveys. All right, so that's pretty it on the American Community Survey. That's, again, if people are looking for rich data, that's, that's really where they're going to find it. Uh, I wanted to just you know, highlight the fact that the Census Bureau has been you know, really um, busy, I should say, uh, planning uh, 2020 census. And the strategic outcome um, in, in this whole planning process and the ultimate outcome is to, is to have a design uh, which has a balance of um, delivering highest quality census while reducing costs. And that's a big one, reducing costs and then also managing the risk. That the has four strategic goals, inaccurate and complete census, embraced and diet results, an efficient census, and a well-managed census. And we uh, are been sending teams around to actually go and talk more about uh, the 2020 census as we move forward with uh, some of our additional tests uh, that will be occurring uh, in preparation for uh, the 2020 census. If you are interested in getting additional information about uh, the 2020 census, as well as any of our surveys and programs, if you look here on the banner uh, of our census homepage under surveys and programs, uh, you're able to see here the 2020 census, here in American Community Survey, economic census. Uh, we, we did a test in because we had some historical tests, the 2017 test uh, was um, uh, this is going to be actually morphed into the 2018 in the end test. But this is where you can get a lot of the survey uh, information. And I just wanted to say while, we, while I have this page highlighted is you know, the, the Customer Liaison Marketing Services Office, as well as some of the other Census Bureau directorates, are offering uh, comprehensive training opportunities. And uh, on our training and education link, uh, there is a, a list of um, upcoming workshops, of which starting in January there will be, there'll be more. But I want to just highlight the 2018 end-to-end uh, -end census test specifically because it's going to be in Pierce County, Washington, as, as one of our focal points, uh, one of our uh, test sites. And this particular test is vital because it supports the goal of the 2020 census, which is to count everyone once, 
only once and in the right place. As 2020 census operations move forward, the Census Bureau will continue to improve the use of one, mobile technology, two, administrative records, three, geospatial data, and the ability to do self-response via the Internet. And this test will provide insights and, and guide the planning uh, as we ensure an accurate census. The, the test is taking place in three locations with more than 700,000 housing units. So Pierce County is definitely one of them, Providence County, Rhode Island, and the Bluefield, Beckley, Oak Hill, West Virginia area. So the goals of the test is to validate and test 2020 census operations, procedures, systems, and field infrastructure to ensure proper integration and conformance with functional and non-functional requirements to produce a prototype of geographic and data products and to validate the 2020 census designs and uh, cost uh, estimate. One of the things uh, is that there will be some hiring uh, starting in October of 2016, which is actually this month. They're beginning hiring uh, at the Los Angeles Regional Office, which is accountable for the test. Um, so there's uh, a number of different kinds of positions uh, that will be opening up. And surely uh, when the test takes place, there will be a, a more, and that would be probably more more local. So just for you to know that that that's you know Washington is going to be you know highlighted for sure uh, in 2018 uh, as they begin to test a lot of the different elements that are going to be required for uh, 2020. Um, I'm seeing a lot of X's here, so I'm hoping that doesn't mean that people are having uh, a lot of issues. But okay, so web web permission is off. Okay, good. All right, so. Any questions, we'll get those later. So I wanted to just give you that because, you know, Washington is involved. So the Census Bureau is involved with developing different types of uh, data tools and apps. The purpose is, you know, all of our data users are not complex data users. They just need, you know, a factoid, a statistic, uh, something that they can repeat or put in their reports. Um, they're not maybe doing the, the knee deep type of research. So they're looking at other in, uh, tools which uh, improve access and usability of the census data. So remember, there used to be times when we had the volumes of books. So now it's, you know, everything's pretty much online, some books, some volumes. Uh, but now we're looking at you know, different kinds of tools and that make it easy for people to go in and, and look at trends and to pull down the data set. and. Uh, and begin to extract what they need so that they use our site and our data and they're not going to other places uh, because the idea obviously is to really be the fact finder for the nation and the place to go. And, you know, with the big open data movement, we're bridging the federal and local data gap, we want, you know, really communities to use uh, the government data, you know, as, as, as really, um, it's really a, a value added, uh, you know, to, to their problem solving. So we are really busy, you know, developing apps um, that um, allow people to extract the data quickly and for us to upload and get the data out a lot quicker. And uh, so one of the programs that's driving that is called City um, SVK. And you'll be hearing more about that. Uh, we are, you know, really are moving forward with um, some of the API development as well uh, with our developer group. So here uh, on the Census Bureau's homepage, you know, under data uh, is where one could find, going to the next page here, uh, the developer site. So I don't know if you have patrons coming into the library, if you have any you know, hackers or, or, or individuals that are coming in that are, you know, getting groups together to have hackathons and to, you know, pull down data and to, you know, try to develop really neat apps. But, you know, the Census Bureau is allowing uh, these developers access uh, to uh, large amounts of American Community Survey data so that they can quickly develop really neat and innovative apps. So here is a picture of our developer page. Um, you know, basically, you know, they, they request a particular key and they're then able to go in and have access uh, to the data sets and it's, um, you know, created like in, in a JSON file 
Uh, so, so they're able to quickly, you know, access the data set. They can also join the developer uh, forum and, um, and, you know, just identify nice ways that they can develop apps with uh, Census Bureau data, uh, the American Community Survey data, all of our data sets. And each time a new data set comes on board, like when we have our new five-year data set coming in in December 8th, and that data will quickly be uh, available then for our developers to pull down uh, in order to be able to look at, you know, some trends and to develop some new um, and interesting apps. Okay. So census apps that we have already developed, uh, you know, using uh, the census uh, application program interface is my congressional district. And again, if you were a congressional district or you were interested in congressional data, you're able to use this tool to go in and, you know, pull up a specific congressional district uh, utilizing normally it's the one-year uh, American Community Survey file. So they'll, they'll give you the latest file. Uh, the one-year tends to be the most recent, and the five-year tends to, to have the more uh, detail, and, this, and it's the only one that takes you down to ge lower geographic areas. But my congressional districts tend to be in the five-year um, if you're getting it off the app. I mean, if you're getting, if you're going into American Fact Finder, then you have some other choices. Uh, quick facts, I would highly would recommend for uh, any of your patrons that just want some quick community facts. And since it's business better, I'm talking about uh, America's economy, dwellers, the neat one. And I'll say a little bit more about these, these two as, we, as I have these other slides up here. Now, you know, Census Bureau was looking at ways to utilize the rich information that's on our website. So on on the home page, there's a there's a, a location prominent on the first page called America's Economy. And it's, it's a listing of then all of our, I think it is 14 economic indicators. And again, going into each of these indicators, unemployment rate, here's an example, um, manufacturing, construction spending, personal income and outlays. Uh, you're able to go in and look at some trend charts and pretty, pretty, pretty vast. But this has also been developed then as a little downloadable app um, that you can put on your phone. And so if you were someone interested in, in really taking the pulse of the economy, then, you know, you are able to have this on your phone. So here's one example of, of making uh, economic uh, data quickly accessible uh, to anyone that wants it. Dweller. I love personally love Dweller because what it does is you once you put in some key information about yourself is specific to you, like start your journey, uh, and it will ask you some questions about where do you like to live and your age and, you know, just some other baseline demographic information. And then what it gives you is like the top 25 places that would be ideal for you. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm interested in living near the mountains, then it may give me, you know, Boise, Idaho as, as one choice. It may, it may give me uh, Eureka. So this, it's really neat uh, in being able to look at um, some, some information about a place level. But it's also neat because it has a, a locality demographic finder. So I'm able to use this app if I'm in Starbucks uh, in a remote place or interesting place and I'm interested in, in the demographic area, I'm able to hit, you know, check current location and it will give me the, the most recent information, census tract data in particular, for that particular area. And I, I tell people when I'm working with them in terms of looking at census data, in terms of, um, you know, looking at a brick and mortar business, that this is actually a good tool to get the pulse of a, of a local geographic area. So Dollar is a neat one. So I mentioned Quick Facts. If you guys haven't been on Quick Facts lately, uh, it has um, completely been empowered. You know, there was a time that you had, you know, one or two geographic areas. Now you can have up to six geographic areas uh, displayed uh, on, a, on a table, and you're also able to graph it. And it will give you, of course, the, most, the latest uh, population estimates as well as uh, data for businesses, and I mean, it's pretty rich uh, in terms of what you're able to do. You're also able to get the geographic um, facts, uh, for example, a geographic identifier for that particular area. The one limitation still is that the population has to be at least 5,000. So that rules out you know, a lot of smaller areas that may, will not have access to quick facts as an app tool, but will have to go into American Fact Finder then and pull their data down. So Census Explorer, 
I have utilized Census Explorer because it allows you to look at uh, some trends. It gives you some information about um, people, education, income, and commuting, and it's state level, county level, census tract level. You know, it's basically an interactive map. So here, Census Explorer will, will be an area that you could, you could identify on the home page in order to access it. So here are like the different types of Census Explorer tools. The one that I, I go to is People, Education, and Income. And what you're able to see then is actually the latest one is 2013 data. And um, I've been told by the media team that you know they will look at how they can continue to up, update um, the the latest data set. But it gives you 2013 American Community Survey data and also the county business patterns. Uh, so that continues to change, and it's like six different variables. So here we're looking at King County median household income 71,000 plus. That's in 2013. I could look at also 20, uh, 1990 and the 2000 census. Uh, to see how those numbers have changed. And you can look at the over 65 population by census tract as well uh, to see how you know, those age groups are also changing uh, in your community. So that's a nice app tool that you know, gives you some nice visuals. The Census Bureau has a number of different types of interactive maps. You know, a picture you know, tells a big story. We have here the Census Flows Mapper. The Census Flows Mapper uh, is an application for county to county migration flows uh, to see how people are moving from one county to another county. And it does have an associated data set uh, that goes along with it. So the, the last one was like um, the 2006, 2010. They're actually putting out a new one. So I believe that's in the next two weeks. Uh, we will have an updated census flows mapper uh, that will really give us a picture of kind of the current county to county flows. So that's that's really a neat one uh, to take a look at. So there's um, lots of uh, interactive maps, and you know that's something if, if someone has time and really wants to have a good picture. And as you know, the American Fact Finder also has updated their mapping application. So it's a great opportunity now to look at uh, census tract zip code level data and to either do a reference map or you know a thematic map. So it's uh, pretty pretty good. So we can actually do an entire workshop on census business builder, and you know we actually had Andy Kate. He was at the uh, Puget Sound Regional Council. I think it was, I guess it was like in September. He was just going around to different areas, and so he's really our guru uh, in you know looking at economic data and really like a champion of census business builder again as an app you know that allows us to you know pull down quick data, and um, it um, it is it is a tool then that is it's set up. You have two. There's one is small business edition, so this is for someone that. Is thinking of you know going into a business, but let me before I go there, let me just say that here is the link. Actually, when you go on to Census Business Builder, and that's actually under Data Tools and App, Census Business Builder as an app data tool, uh, you know, and it allows you then to say you know you want to get into either the Census um, Small Business Edition or the Regional Analyst Edition, which allows you to build you know a couple of counties. Uh, to look at kind of a geographic area, and that's good if you were, for example, a chamber of commerce. But here's a here's a tool, here's an interactive video that allows you to get a walkthrough of what the tool can do. I highly recommend that. And they actually have a series of them, you know, overview, navigation, filters, profile report, tips and tricks. So it's pretty pretty easy app to actually maneuver through. But you can also pull down a flyer, and so it's a good one to send your patrons to to look at um, some tools. But and so here is just a picture of what's on it. So it's you know so it's bringing down uh, the the latest five year estimates, and it will repopulate in December with the newest estimates, pulling down the key uh, demographic, economic, and housing characteristics. It's also uh, Bringing in the 2012 economic census, you know, which is giving us data about for about number of establishments, 
uh, in terms of sense of employment, number of people, how big the company could be in terms of employment size, annual payroll, sales, shipments, receipts, revenue, and then the county business patterns is included. So the newest one gets populated, non-employer statistics. Uh, so these are people that um, um, you know, are you get it, that are that obviously don't employ people. So you're able to get uh, non-employer establishment uh, data. And um, the 2015 consumer spending data, uh, we take that from the um, CPI consumer expenditure survey, uh, where you can get um, and take a look at how people are spending uh, resources in these key areas. So that's uh, pretty broad in terms of getting a picture of a community. So for example, this is a quick picture of I would select an economic sector. So you know we have here construction, food services, healthcare, personal services, professional business services, and retail. So I would select the business that I was interested in researching or the one that I'm already in. And then I'm able then to put in the location. So I type in, start typing in you know Seattle. And uh, or I can say go to map. I mean here because there's a local locality uh, finder here. Then I can say go to map or then create a report. But of course I, I think I want to drill down more on one of these categories. All right, here we go. So for example, if I'm interested in real estate, uh, uh, once I've checked professional business services. What opens up then are these choices, you know, accounting, architects, consulting, janitorial services, lawyers, trucking, and then so real estate. And then in this case, I'm, you know, I would type in my location. And then you could just type in your location and go to Matthew. There's also, if you knew what your NAICS code was, you wanted to drill down, and I want it like 4,500 for retail. Um, you're able to get, or, or you can nail down. If I'm looking at real estate here, but there's, you know, either a different. You can get the four digit, two digit, the you know, sector code, all the way down to looking at your industry code. If you knew what that was, you're able to do a search there as well. Okay, so in terms of map view, you know, what is going to always default to total population. Uh, so again, you know, the demographic characteristics and social um, social uh, demographic information. Um, so you're able to look at those profiles. You can look at total population. You can also look at different age groups. So kind of a vast array of looking at a market, and that then changes, you know, the, the composition of your map. But it gives you a couple of different things. Here would be my total population. Uh, as well as a graph, as well as um, some specific data. So it's, it's giving you data on the fly here, um, you know, which is a nice tool. I'm also just able to create a report. So I've done a series number of these you know, different workshops uh, where you're looking at an entrepreneur. So maybe they just really just want to develop a report. And again, so the report covers the areas of looking at customers, Businesses like yours, which means businesses like mine, which is giving you actually um, competitors. And again, that includes both uh, those that employ people as well as those non-employers. Uh, and also data on uh, consumer spending. And then here's actually a link to going into the report. And um, since it's, it's a pretty long report, like four pages, because it's giving you the business data uh, as well as that demographic and socioeconomic data here, but it is what's in this, along with an associated map. Okay. Then the regional analyst edition we won't go into today, but uh, you can go into that, and again, it allows you to um, build build a um, build your own territory. Uh, so you build your own service area. Again, if you were a you know, chamber of commerce. Um, or an economic development group that needed to pull you know, your, your specific counties in uh, to look at uh, you know different sector level data as well as again that American Community Survey county business patterns. It also gives you data on the survey of business owners, the regional analyst edition, and also your consumer spending. And um, the, the, the only challenge is you're really looking at uh, kind of the, the sector code, uh, the two digit NAICS code. 
but it's um, again, it does allow you to look at um, a wider territory and to build your territory over and beyond looking at a singular county or, or, or even a place. So that's great. I uh, wanted to just do a commercial, I should say. Uh, censusreporter.org, if you have not been into this tool, uh, it is um, actually a tool, an app that was developed, that was funded by the Knights Writer Foundation for Media. And they needed a tool, a way to look at census data that was easy and effortless, you know, that allowed them to get the latest data set. So. Uh, this, this developer group got together and created censusreporter.org. I, I personally like the tool. I go on there uh, periodically, especially if I need to look at uh, types of tables uh, in a particular uh, in a particular topical area like poverty. You know, so it gives me the table number and um, as well as the number of key most popular used tables. So it's really good. But again, some mapping. Uh, you then you can, as you scroll down, uh, you'll be then be able to look at some other some other um, demographic uh, information and make those choices. You can also drill down to census track level. So it's a pretty user friendly tool. The challenge is they will they just have the latest data. I don't think they have any historical data. So you would really need to go on to the American um, you know, fact finder for that. So I just wanted to say, you know, given that we have all these neat tools out uh, in the marketplace, uh, one of the things that the Census Bureau uh, is uh, creating right now, uh, if you haven't heard already, is um, we're looking at a, a new data uh, extraction tool for um, for completion uh, as, a, as, a, as a really major launch uh, in uh, July of 2017. So that's um, you know next this what is this summer, this next whatever the coming summer is. And um, so they're you know been showcasing this particular tool. The group that is developing it is called SetSide. That's not the name of the tool. And and really, if you just I need to just put this down. I didn't get a chance to put this um, on onto the in, into a slide yet. Uh, slash preview, but you are able to go into this tool and um, and actually you know play with um, this particular uh, data extraction tool, which is going to take the place of American Fact Finder. And I, I just want to say that just in terms of my short preview of it, uh, you know, they are utilizing some of the things that we're seeing on Census Reporter, and um, you're, they're utilizing a lot of the apps, and it will be able to extract that kind of data really quickly, and, and by you creating kind of your own user query. So it's going to be neat, and we'll be sharing that more, profiling that. But if you wanted to go in and just play with uh, the preview to see what what's, what is available there. Um, that is the website um, for kind of our our, our um, alpha version of, um, of of the new data extraction tool that they're working on improving. So they are looking for feedback so they can you know be sure that they're delivering a product that people are going to be happy with. So just want to say this is the direction that we're going in in terms of allowing you know, users to be able to look at data and, and pull the best from American Fact Finder uh, and then, of course, um, be able to utilize, uh, uh, you know, on the fly graphs and maps and, um, and data points that you're able to pull down quickly. So lots of good things coming at the Census Bureau and you, you will definitely be, you know, part of that, uh, that, that process uh, unfolding. I just wanted to just talk about some of the highlights of our of our new of of, of our census um, homepage. They continue to fine tune it. Uh, so one of the things that you're, you're currently able to see, for example, if you do a search uh, in the in the search box up at the top, which I use quite often, is um, you know is just able to just pull down some keys some some key facts. So you have a drop down. So again. We're giving you key data points as well as the source. So the new platform is doing that as well. So you're going to quickly be able to see um, 
some whatever data point you're interesting interested in, you're going to be able to see some key um, data about it pretty quickly. And again, going into the smart search, um, I'm then able to see that factoid, that statistic, as well as some links to um, to, the, to my geographic area of choice. So see with at Seattle, Washington, and of course, here's what will we'll populate here will be the kind of the latest link, uh, the most popular link uh, for that particular area. And again, they're giving you some key data right over here um, to your right. And that's going to continue uh, with um, with the website and will mirror very similarly what they're doing with the new data extraction tool just and being able to see these um, these quick um, facts about the geographic area that you have uh, selected um, as a point of interest. And so again, the, you know, we have on the banner the topics area. And so I tell people, if you're doing some research in a particular area, it definitely benefits you to do a topic search to see what the Census Bureau has uh, in terms of some of our, our reports and, and research you know, from our subject matter experts. So here we're looking at health, health broken down into just a couple of key areas. You know, disability here is one, you know, fertility, HIV, AIDS, you know, small area data. Again, then going then to the landing page of disability, uh, where you're able to look at, you know, how we define it, some methodology, the sources of, of, of obtaining disability data over and beyond the American Community Survey, and um, some of the reports um, that have occurred um, that people have conducted uh, on that particular topic. Also under library, uh, there, you might be interested in just looking at uh, publications. So publications is, is one area um, that you're able to then uh, look at the types of reports that have been published uh, in your, your key research area. You're also um, able here then to look at like videos. So last week I was in Boise, Idaho, and there was a, a video that, that we uh, do that markets and speaks to the value of American Community Survey uh, in, a, in, in terms of how data users are using it. So it was one uh, nonprofit group called Kaboom. Uh, so there's a, a video on there um, called Kaboom and showing how they use data to you know, find it funding for playground equipment. Uh, in, in key areas uh, of, of their target area. So, I mean, it's pretty neat. So we're, we're always looking at opportunities to, you know, publicize uh, PDFs as well as videos uh, to really talk about, you know, the value of the data. Uh, I mentioned to you, you know, we have, we will have ongoing webinars. Maybe some of you were able to attend our summer series. We'll start another one in January. So when I say we, that's the customer that is our marketing services office, as well as some of the ACS staff and economic directorate staff. But there's a number of training and workshops under data here. So uh, if you were interested in getting into a particular topic, and here there's, there's not a great deal yet, um, but here, for example, finding historical Census Bureau data, measuring America, looking at international data, uh, accessing family living arrangements. So as new data come will come out, you know, like they're talking and we talked about the county to county flows, then you know you'll be able to see some of that in the training room here. Uh, the other place will be in the newsroom. So um, in the newsroom, of course, it, one way is to keep looking at some of the news releases that are coming. And so whenever we do a release then the newsroom uh, and news release will, will actually display what that release is all about. And once it's actually released, then you actually have access to a deep link that takes you to that specific data set and, and any, any additional reports, PowerPoint presentations are related to that topic. And um, so facts for features, so that's, you know, we're coming, we're coming close to um, Veterans Day, so we'll be putting out a facts for features for, for Veterans Day. They did something for Halloween. Um, so, you know, when it's, uh, it, you know, Older Americans Month or uh, any particular topic that may be pertinent, the facts for features is a great tool to tell people to go there uh, because it has some links to the data and sometimes some, um, some comparisons. 
So that factor features is really, really great. Um, and well, you know, the director Thompson also does a number of different blogs uh, about our releases. So newsroom is another good place to tell people to go. Uh, tip sheet is good because you, I think we put out one or two, one or two a month. We'll give you the latest releases that are coming, what's what's coming down the pipeline. So that's always neat. And um, so news releases, you know, again, you can look at the topics of things that we're releasing, that employment, emergency preparedness. So it's, it's a pretty good place to go to look for different types of articles on, in, a, in a specific uh, topical area. Okay, so good. I, so basically, you know, I, I wanted to just give you just enough to, you know, highlight some of the changes that are occurring, you know, we have so much on our website, it really can become overwhelming. But, you know, as librarians, you're always, you know, people are coming in, patrons are needing data. It's really good to have something on your, in your shelf that you can pull down and say, yeah, the Census Bureau has that, or they don't have that. But here's, here's a neat tool that I just learned about. Uh, but, you know, so you guys are really primary in getting the word out. So, we, um, you know, if you have questions, you always definitely are able to, you know, send people my way at this point. They, there's a customer service number as well. Um, I have a mobile number. There's the Los Angeles Regional Office number. The 1-800 uh, number is good. I go there sometimes if I, if I need to get directly to a subject matter expert uh, in a particular topic area. Sometimes if the person that answers the phone can't answer the note, they'll, they'll send you on to, to someone that possibly can. Okay, so basically that's it in a nutshell. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, take questions. We're about 10 minutes to um, 10 now, and uh, I wanted to leave it, leave some time for some questions. So at this point, I will turn it oh, over well, to thank Jeremy. Oh, you, Leah. And Karen. it be uh, a time that if you had any specific things you wanted to learn about, um, and I noticed that Jeremy is quickly doing something while you might be typing your questions. If you don't have any questions and you wanted to um, to uh, fill out the survey before you, you left, we'd appreciate that. But did anybody have any particular questions that they, now's the time to type them in chat. Um, I wanted to thank Aaliyah for all of her contact information. After you have filled out that census, uh, we can go back and, and pull up any of those um, those contact information. There's good to have. Anyone have any questions? You, and if you have a mic, you can click on the talk button and ask Leah directly. You know, one of the things, if I don't know if this is possible, Jeremy, can you have her go back to one of her things and go over this? Because I was in, I was interested as to have her demonstrate how she mm -hmm. would use Dweller mm -hmm. to take the economic pulse. Wow. She, she mentioned that, and so I would like to have her demonstrate that. Okay. That intrigued me as how you might use that, um, and maybe just have her walk through that. Can okay. she go back and do that? We um, certainly can, but let's give it a couple moments for the survey to finish up for folks. Because if we change yeah. it now, they'll they'll drop out of the survey. Okay. Well, if you yeah. haven't taken the survey, please do so, so that we can have her um, demonstrate how she would use Dweller to take okay. the economic pulse of an area. So maybe we can do a yes, no. Um, are people finished? How many people are finished taking the um, endless survey? Is hung. You can't complete it. Jeremy? Jer Joe? Okay. I think it's just general bandwidth issues that we're having uh, throughout the day. Okay. So, um, can you guys hear me still? Well, yes. Just barely. Uh, okay. So, Caroline um, is really staticky. Okay. Um, on Dweller, it, it's not something that's online. Can you, it's a phone app or your, your iPad app. So you basically um, would need to go into the App Store and download Dweller, D-W-E-L-L-R, into your phone or iPad. And um, so what it will do will ask you a series of questions. Mainly it's about you initially. So, okay, so what's you know, your age, you know, education, just some, some demographic information about yourself. 
So this is, the, the primary purpose, as I mentioned, is to identify perhaps the top 15 places that you would like to live, you know, based on some criteria. You know, living near the ocean, in the mountains, so it gives you, you know, that kind of uh, information. The, the value comes in as a uh, locality demographic finder in that it has checked current location and built in. So, for example, I'm, I'm teaching a class and I'm, you know, they're, someone's looking at, you know, setting up a little coffee shop, uh, you know, and so they're looking for a particular location in town. So, so my recommendation, so they walk, they're walking down the street and, you know, they see this vacant building, so before they call the real estate agent, they can say, check current location. And what Dweller will do then is give you the demographics of that census tract. So, so since the checks, of course, could be, you know, anywhere between 15 to 18,000 people, right? So it's going to check the current location. So we'll give you, again, you know, the age, you know, race, ethnicity, the median income, housing value, education level, uh, key information about that particular area. So, you know, if I had a little coffee shop and you know, a toy store or something, maybe on the most part this would be something that people would walk to. So, you know, you're, so if you look at kind of your primary service areas in that two-mile radius, so that would be ideal just to check the pulse of that particular uh, business site, proposed business site. So okay. that's, that's how I tell people how to use it, Carol. You have to okay. download it first, okay? Uh, okay, that, that makes sense. Now I'm going to spin a different question at you. So um, in as much as more and more of our commerce is being done online, mm -hmm. is the census doing anything to track online business? Okay. So let's see. There is a, um, so there's a mail order business. You, you can track data on mail order business. There is a report uh, that you can also find. Uh, let's see. Where is that report at? Oh, boy. So if you would go ahead and do the search box and, and say like uh, you know um, you know mail order businesses, uh, electronic businesses, electronic I think that's the word, electronic yeah. businesses, they will it will lead you to a report. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Do we want to pull up uh, perhaps web tour? I can try it. Page? Let's see. Let me, see. Let, me, let, me see. let me try it. Let me get in here. Oops, wrong one, Leo. Okay, what happened to my census dot gov? Saw my junk mail. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, I haven't been on in a while here, so but I'm just going to try electronic businesses. Can you see that okay? Uh, no, on the web no. tour here. Um, I, got it. I, mean, I have to hit web tour, don't I? Yeah, hit web tour up here at the very top. Okay, web tour. I, just, I forgot where that was now. Okay, I'm sorry. Web tour. This, this one, right? Application yep. here, web tour. Yeah, web tour. Okay, great. Yep, got okay, it. Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So it's 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 load it's loading now. Thank you for that. So yeah, I think it's electronic businesses. And what is that? Forty five oh one other code, I think. Things are very slow today. I don't remember it ever yeah. being so slow to load. Can I type can I type in my um, URL here? Yes, at the very top. Just type in your URL, okay. and copy and paste it. And, and Carolyn, I'm going to keep muting your mic because we're getting a lot of extra copy noise on that one. It. Sorry about that. Uh huh. Okay, good. Okay, just have to hit enter. Okay, great. So it's loading. All right. Okay, still loading. Hmm. Okay. I think we're still loading here. Oh, that doesn't look like it's loading very well at all. No, it's not, huh? Uh, um, I think huh. we came, when we were testing uh, during orientation, we came across this problem. When we moved to a different page, so the other pages work. It was just the main page. Okay, so hmm. let's 
so the challenge is I can't find my I need I need to have my search box here. Is there another way I can find it? So okay, how about uh, do you have it open in your own browser? We can do an application share perhaps? Sure. So I do have it here. So let me so should I open it up first or do application share first? Uh, open it up first. Okay, but I did. I can't see my. Okay, so it's open. So application share. Let's try that. Okay. Share your desktop. Share desktop. So what I'm seeing, Jeremy, is share desktop available sharing selection. Share. Yep. Select your. Okay. Select your browser. Oh, it looks like you shared your whole desktop. That's okay. So okay, then now. just load up your browser. So you see it now. Can you see it now? Mic. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, so so you look at it, electronic business, and I think the electronic. Okay, so electronic uh, businesses. Let's see. Okay, so economic statistics, e-commerce. I'm sorry. There we go. E-commerce. That's the word. Okay. So um, e-commerce is the word. So this is measuring the electronic economy. Okay. So um, so there's an e-stats report. So this is actually in 2016. Okay. So you're able to look at um, e-commerce statistics on shipment sales and revenues from four sectors of the economy. Okay. And then there's some data on how e-commerce, and this is a later measuring. So let's this is a report. I'm just going to go here. I haven't been here in a, ever, so let me just see what's here. Okay, so there's actually a, a report that talks about and then provides tables and reports. Um, okay, so I can try to go to tables. Let me see what it looks like versus the report. Let me see if I can find some tables. So here it is. Um, whoops, uh -oh. So here we have um, manufacturing different tables comparing 2013 and 2014, total e-commerce values. So this would be some of the data sets, Carolyn, related to uh, e-commerce. Okay, that's, that's the electronic um, online sales. Okay, is that, is that helpful? All right. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. That's a good question. It's been coming up in my field. We are, we are definitely looking at it. Um, they're also looking at a a new survey of, I think it's what a survey of entrepreneurs. I think that's going to be an annual survey. So that's going to fill in, you know, with what we're doing with a survey of business owners. Uh, so we may we might capture some of that electronic uh, e-commerce business in that annual survey as well. So I think that I think we just started that this year. So I don't know when we'll actually see the data. I don't know enough about that particular survey. I hope that's helpful. But that's that's how that's how I use the how I would use my my search box to look for a particular topic um, because it's, you know otherwise it's kind of difficult to find. I okay. noticed that Andy is typing. Andy, did you have a question that I don't see have to come through yet? Oh, let me see. So I lost my. Can I go back to my here? Oops. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing unless there's a question related to me going online. Okay. Your microphone's turned off, Carolyn, but she was she was asking if there were any other questions. I don't see anyone typing. So I'll say thank you very much, uh, Leah. We really appreciate your um, efforts to bring us up to date with what's going on. So. Um, we we wanted to say thank you, and uh, if you have additional questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with Leah directly. So thank you for your attendance, and we will uh, hope to see you at another one of our presentations in the future. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Jeremy and Joe. And thank you, everyone. I, I really enjoy you know spending uh, this time with you, and by all means, you know please contact me if I can be of assistance. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Oh, Carolyn, can I have you log back on?
Jeremy, it's okay just to log off now? Yeah, I, well, if you hang out for one moment, we want to test some stuff with the mic, see if we can figure out what the heck all that static okay. was. Okay, okay, sure, we'll do it. Okay. I'm not actually hearing any static from you at the moment. 